we are at Clothesline, the show where we wring them clean, string them up and put them to dry on the Clothesline. And in case you are wondering, this is me, Fatima Karan, being given the opportunity of a lifetime to host this show. Madhu is on holiday and I'm taking a break from mine. And before we begin, here's a disclaimer, especially for my fellow colleagues. This is a satirical show. Please don't take things to heart. Well, here we go. Elections 2014 seem to be bringing out internal tensions in leading political parties, making it all look less like a battle for seats and more like a game of musical chairs. Shiv Sena spokesperson Rahul Narvikar today joined Sharad Pawar's party. Jaswan Singh ne BJP chhod di hai. Kendri Mantri D. Purundeshwari BJP mein shamil hongi. Satpal Maharaj has quit the party and joined hands with the BJP. Ram Kripal Yadav is joining the BJP. Oof, they really move faster than lightning when they sniff a political opportunity and slower than snails when it comes to real change. There has also been an influx of journalists into politics and this past fortnight was no different with MJ Akbar joining the BJP. While some were quick to play up Akbar's old anti-Modi views, what really caught our eye was this clip on headlines today of his induction into the party by Rajnath Singh. Akbar was all praise for Modi saying that he has the capability to give a new vision and direction to the country. Can anyone tell us what Rajnath Singh was telling MJ Akbar there? Because all our guesses are impolite. Perhaps it will forever remain a mystery, but enough of that. Let's talk about the mystery that's been dominating news for three whole weeks now. That is the disappearance of flight MH370. The plane's vanishing, of course, has been both strange and tragic, but here's something even stranger. That's the way the Indian media covered it. First up, we had Savarna News 24-7, who were not content with just reporting on the missing plane and decided to make contact with the plane themselves. Listen to me carefully, follow my instructions. Just focus your mind. Now the man in white is Sri Sri Ramachandra Guruji and his website describes him as an internationally renowned spiritual master, a past life regression therapist and a psycho-spiritual hypnotherapist. So what is one to expect from a man with such lofty credentials? watch just try to read their feelings of the pilots are they happy with the signals experience it experience it what's happening things are falling things are falling any announcement guruji you are not from cockpit from pilot side this is the captain speaking and on behalf of all pilots everywhere, you should be ashamed of yourself. One person is holding it. Where is this mouth? This beyond! This beyond! Leave us! Leave us! I think that lady actually died on us. But the larger question is, why even use satellite imaging, search planes and naval vessels to find MH370 when you can just call Shri Shri Ramachandra Guruji? Now, while Savarna News did have Guruji to make contact with the plane from the comfort of their studios, Times now decided to move out of their studios and actually join the search operations. At about 1500 flight level here in a Malaysian Air Force Hercules, Times now is the only channel on the task force which is looking out for the flight Malaysian Airlines 370. Probably not the time to be bragging considering the situation, but then you wouldn't be Times now if you weren't bragging. Well, getting on a search aircraft isn't an achievement, but asking these questions, that takes talent. I have with me Sergeant Zulel, who is the one who's observing uh, the entire Andaman Sea, uh, scouring for any uh, uh, sites of the uh, Malaysian Airlines flight. Uh, what are you looking for? Well, the options are A, the Loch Ness Monster, B, mermaids. C. Godzilla. D. The part of your brain that processes information and allows you to ask intelligent questions. You are on a rescue aircraft looking for signs of MH370. What do you think he's looking for? What do you feel about this search and rescue? Do you think you'll be successful? Well, here are some answers. Not really. B. Successful at what exactly? C. I'm just in it for the flying. And D. Can I throw you off this plane? Do you hope to find the aircraft? That's it. I give up and I'm sure that after that gem of a question, the poor sergeant 
wasn't too hopeful either. Now, there was plenty of speculation as to what happened to MH370, and abundant theories were soon followed by rumor mongering, like these tweets by the American defense analyst Strobe Talbot. Nine eleven, huh? Well, while Mr. Talbot's theory certainly put a spin on the mystery, it fueled the imagination of News X, whose website, by the way, informs us that they believe in focusing on news and staying away from hysteria and sensationalism. And so they decided to do this. This plane was not routed towards India. This plane was not moving towards India. Great job there, News X. Understated and classy as always. That is anything but newsy. Maybe our Hindi channels like India News can show you how it's done. Namaskar, you are watching India News and I am with you, Anurag Muskan. Where did flight 370 go? Where do we begin? Well, the anchor sitting on a tacky graphic, that is strike one. Alien plane, that is certainly strike two. And also, that is not even a passenger aircraft you're using. Strike three. India News, you are out. The search for the plane was initially just over the South China Sea, but as we know, new facts kept emerging. The search area just got larger and larger, but it got so large that it made CNN forget geography. Now, elections 2014 means all conversations must be about politics. Like Rajiv Bajaj, MD of Bajaj Auto, who appeared on NDTV Profit to talk business and when asked about politics, instead decided to mix business with politics. The disclaimer is that I don't know much about politics and I have no intention of uh, knowing any more than I do. But to me, the Congress is a bit like the Chetan. My own view, uh, personal view about the BJP, is that uh, it's a bit like the splendor was to the Chetak. Um, it's new and improved. Uh, it's a little better and different. The Aam Admi Party uh, is a bit like the Pulsar. It is clearly different. Um, it uh, creates a space of its own. Smart man staying neutral while also indulging in some fine product placement. And then we had Art of Living Head, Shri Shri Ravi Shankar, taking a leaf out of Mr. Bajaj's book and mixing spirituality with politics. Subtle Shri Shri. Now, if this trend of profession-based analogies continues, it will not be long before we see headlines like these. Now, since everyone seems to have an opinion on which way India is going to go politically, we've had a plethora of open mic news programming where anchors are taking to the streets to gauge popular opinion. Unfortunately, things sometimes get out of hand, like what happened when Barkha visited Banaras Hindu University. The debate here, the debate here getting very volatile. I don't agree with him because Modi, Modi is synonym, sir. You must, you must allow him to speak. That was a little scary. Barkha, note to self, gauge the mood of the place before trying to gauge the mood of the people. Now that reminds us of this. Shant ho jaiye, please, please shant ho jaiye. Bed jaiye, bed jaiye, shant ho jaiye. Sagrika, however, clearly learned from her Khirki extension experience, though, because in Banaras it was all smooth sailing for her. And while Sagrika was making waves, Barkha's buck stops here from Varanasi wasn't as pleasant. And so Barkha had to resort to this. Have you taken okay, I'm going to interrupt, interrupt, interrupt here. I'm going to interrupt here. The whole I am going to interrupt here. Please just say that. Asifah Khan, Gaurav Bhatia. Should have said innocent Indian. Please, I'm, I, I'm going to shout above you now. I am going to shout above you. Okay, I'm interrupting there. I'm interrupting there. Asifah ji and Gaurav Bhatia ji. Give us a second. You're both very angry. 
but I'm requesting the national politicians now to just just pause, no, just pause. Not, I, you know, I'm I I have to say I have to say I don't know if our cameras can pick it up, but I'm listening to you all. But I'm looking at a beautiful moon over the ghats of Banaras, yeah. where there's a sense of serenity, and then I'm hearing all this political argument, and these are the these are the contradictions of India. And we're going to try and get I think yeah, one of those cameras that they're turning around to try and get that moon there. Look at that moon, and let's all be calm. Let's bring the temperatures down. <sighs> Now that is one way to calm tempers, eh, Barkha? Maybe Arnab needs to start looking at the moon a lot more. But with that temper, he is going to need two moons. Hurry up and do that interview, Arnab. We'd love to see it. Also, what is this? A chart wala at 9.30 p.m. at night on your set, Barkha. Hopefully, he was adequately compensated for being turned into a human prop. Now, we have, of course, heard of efforts to spice things up on the show, but this is quite something else. Now, the presence of the Chatwala was certainly conspicuous, but on Times Now, one man was conspicuous by his very absence. Yes, even Arnab needs a break. Thankfully, though, while he's away, his show is in perfect hands. But you've that been is saying there is no Modi way. Why is Mulayam Singh then not taking the Narendra Modi on from Baranasi? Your party why has Azamgar? been saying there is no Modi wave. You've been saying there is no BJP wave. Then why Ask this sudden one by one. rush? I request it. I request both of you. Not to simultaneously ask two questions. We've said this before. Actually, it's not we who've said this. Madhu has said this before. When Arnab is on leave, it takes two anchors to fill in his shoes. Well, moving now from Times Now's editor-in-chief to CNN IBN's Rajdeep Sardesai, who on Thursday afternoon announced his sorrow at the news of Asha Parekh's death to his 1.21 million followers. However, Asha Parekh is alive. So after tweeting out her death, Rajdeep resurrected her, but only after naming his incredibly credible news source, Twitter. Do tweet to us if you know who is the source of such rumour mongering. Well, here's another gem. Dev Adhikari, a Bengali actor and TMC Lok Sabha candidate who said this, contesting the elections is like being raped. You can either shout aloud or enjoy it. Once the media played up that comment sparking outrage, they came out with this. I'm new to politics. My heart is clean. No offence meant to anyone. Why is it that every time someone says no offence meant to anyone, they've already upset everyone? And they've a comment like that has nothing to do with politics. Your heart may be clean, but it is your brain that we're worried about. Well, while there was only one angle to that particular story, this past fortnight, NDTV English and NDTV Hindi decided to experiment with their angles. No, not story angles, but camera angles. First up, there was this from NDTV 24-7. Mr. P. Chidambaram will not contest polls this time. Instead, the Congress has given ticket to his son, Mr. Karthi Chidambaram. Karthi, congratulations. Uh, the Congress remains politically isolated in Tamil Nadu. Is it going to be a tough task for you now? Talk about putting someone on a pedestal. Either the reporter is standing in a hole or Karthi is wearing high heels. Or Mr. Chidamram, your son, is a giant amongst men. Not really sure what is the weirdest. Well, not to be left behind, NDTV Hindi hit back with Ravish. Darul Ulum Deoband unme se ek hai, Aligarh Muslim Vishwavidyalaya unme se ek hai, aur Jamia Milia Islamia. Now, we have said this before that Ravish is a talented anchor, but now he can add levitation to his list of talents. Or maybe he's on a magic carpet. Well, while Ravish mesmerized us with his flying, there was drama in the skies when Spicejet outraged the DGCA with this. Now, we didn't think it was that serious until we turned on headlines today, who brought us the former director of flight safety of Indian Airlines, S.S. Parasar, who seems to have retired not only from his job, but from making any sense at all. To say that this could lead to a possibility, it's very hypothetical, don't you think? No, it is not hypothetical. This is what are the interest of doing this thing, dancing on board? They want to show Holi festival. Mm. Tomorrow they want to show the Diwali. They start burning the crackers on board. Really? That's the worry? So on Diwali, they burst crackers and then logically on Lori, they'll do this. And on Republic Day, they'll do this.
With all this tamasha happening on commercial airlines, it is no wonder that political leaders prefer using private chartered flights. Also making waves this past fortnight was the leaking of the government-classified Brooks Henderson report on the 1962 Indo-Chinese conflict where India was humiliated to say the least. Now the lengthy report analyzes bad judgment calls both politically and militarily but you know which way the objective press leans just by looking at some headlines. So the Times of India saw it through India's political prism because it's today's politics that pays. Their motto must be, history is for the dead. Hindustan Times played it safe with this headline. And no prizes for guessing what Indian Express went with. It's always the military's fault. These three headlines are for the same story. Know your spin. Speaking of newspapers giving their own twist to the news, we had the Economic Times who gave us this headline about a company called DFL and ran it with this. WFT. As if DLF didn't already get enough bad publicity. Now ET also goofed up, but Fox News in the United States had a real cock up. Coming to us from Seattle, guys, well, that's another photo. You can see the smoke billowing up next to the Space Needle there, that iconic image in uh, Seattle. Man, so, so that's Edward Scissorhands, so we'll just ignore that. And so, you know, a lot of people. Is Fox News nuts? Good job to the anchors for controlling their surprise. Well, that's it for this week. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. If you have any moments from journalism that made you go, oh, wow, or, oh, crap, write into us or tweet to us. We are the change. You are the change, for better or worse. Never do nothing. Stay connected. Stay online. <laughs>